Things are getting crazy out there, and if you listen to the media, it might be the end of the world. So how should we be responding to the threat of the coronavirus? Do you know how many times in the Bible it says not to be afraid? Over 300 times. Some have said 365 times, which is at least one fear not for every single day of the year. Are we trusting in God or are we leaning on our own understanding? Is our faith in him, in God, or is it in government? It seems like state control is increasing every day. You know, Benjamin Franklin once said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. So is this all a move toward globalism? Big government advocates have often said never let a serious crisis go to waste, and the media sure has taken advantage of all this. So could this be a test run for socialism? Could it be a sign of the end times? Maybe both. I'm David Fiorazzo, and this is Christ and Culture. Yes, the coronavirus is a very real threat. We should be taking precautions, protecting our families, making wise decisions, but step back and remember who's in control and always has been. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A.W. Tozer once said that a scared world needs a fearless church. People are watching how Christians respond at times like this. But it's hard to be at peace, pray, read God's word, or encourage people when we're busy listening to the media, government, and others saying, Be very afraid, every man for himself. Well, here are just a few Bible verses to consider. 2 Timothy 1.7, We have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power love, and a sound mind. Psalm 34 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. And Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Here's more perspective. Did you know that around 20,000 people in the United States have died from the flu since last fall? The media doesn't talk much about that, do they? That's over 100 deaths a day. And as of today, about 90 people have died due to the coronavirus in America. Every death is tragic, but let's not buy the panic being sold to us. In China, over 3,000 have died, but do you know how many have recovered from coronavirus? Almost 69,000. So while the hoarding of toilet paper and hand sanitizer and whatever else, fear, the unknown, following the crowd, some have become irrational. It's corporate-sponsored media-infused hysteria. The Bible says to be anxious for nothing but to pray about everything. Modern medical research has also proven that worry breaks down our resistance to disease. So don't worry. We can be concerned about health issues without giving in to fear. Another thing, are we looking to government to give us something maybe it can't deliver, like true peace and security? Are we looking to government for protection rather than turning to the living God who created us? There seems to be an agenda at work here, though. I'm concerned when so many people believe everything the biased, complicit, irresponsible media says. Be honest, they're generally in it for the ratings, and many of them want to bring President Trump down by somehow blaming him for the spread of the coronavirus. Tell me, how exactly does that work? Check out this contrast in media coverage that Sean Hannity exposed on a recent recent show. Let's take a look at the H1N1 pandemic, swine flu, 2009, 2010. More than 20,000 Americans had been hospitalized and more than 1,000 American citizens were dead. 1,000. And only then, six months later, did then President Obama finally declare a national emergency. That year, the CDC estimated 60.8 million Americans were infected, which ultimately resulted in over 274,000 Americans being hospitalized and nearly 13,000 Americans in a one-year period dying. 
worldwide. About 500, upwards of 575,000 people died in 2009 from swine flu, H1N1. Now, the media mob, how did they react back then? Let's talk about uh, this. this is something that is concerning a whole lot of people these days. We're talking about the H1N1 and now the president, President Barack Obama, declaring the swine flu outbreak a national emergency. Should there be a worst case scenario, but administration officials are emphasizing here, Frederica, it's not that they are expecting one. More than a thousand people in the U.S. have died from the H1N1 virus, 90 in the last week. The federal government had predicted there would be 100 million doses of vaccine by now, but as of this weekend, about 11 million were available. When we hear emergency, alarm bells start to go off. What exactly does this declaration mean? Well, the first thing to say is people shouldn't panic when they hear this. Health officials battling the H1N1 flu virus this weekend have received two booster shots of their own. President Obama has declared the virus a national emergency. Nowhere near the intensity, even though it was more deadly and half its victims were healthy and young. Media coverage of the swine flu was nowhere near the hysteria or the extent of the coronavirus coverage today. Why? I think we know. Another thing I don't understand, though, is how we can possibly compare the United States of America with Italy or even China as it relates to government, health care, freedom, handling of the coronavirus. Be informed, all right, but not alarmed. This too shall pass one way or another, and as for believers, God will cause this to work out for our good and for his glory. So could this really spread and be the end times event that will cause Americans to finally repent and cry out to God? That remains to be seen. But we can look back at history for some encouragement. In the Old Testament, for example, in the book of 2 Chronicles, shortly after Solomon's heartfelt prayer of repentance and the children of Israel dedicating the temple in Jerusalem, God spoke to the people, saying, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, this was specific to the people of Israel at that time. But there's a principle for us. Repent in humility and return to God. The very next verse promises that you will find God if you search for him with all your heart. Now, the most deadly virus in the world is sin, which every human being will die from one day, and the only remedy is the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. Draw near to him, the Bible says, and he will draw near to you. Confess your sins and receive forgiveness and everlasting life. As people all around us are looking for answers today, live out your faith. Point them to Jesus, to the Bible, to the unfading hope in him. And when things are shaky and people fear for their lives, they're generally more open to having conversations about what happens after we die. So let's use every opportunity to share the good news about a sovereign, unshakable, unchangeable God. It's one day at a time, friends. Fear not. God bless you and keep speaking the truth about things that matter.